National Football League. From Atlanta Fulton County Stadium, it's the Seattle Seahawks versus the Atlanta Falcons. Brought to you by Ford and your Ford dealer. Have you driven a Ford lately? By Budweiser, proud sponsor of the 1988 U.S. Olympic team. This Bud's for you. And by GTE. At GTE, the power is on. We are live at Fulton County Stadium in Atlanta, Georgia for this afternoon's interconference battle between the Seattle Seahawks and the Atlanta Falcons. Overnight and early morning rains have subsided and given way to partly cloudy skies with a game time temperature of 70 degrees. Very humid down on the field, but surprisingly not as wet as we had thought. Hello, everyone. Kevin Slayton alongside former Green Bay Packer Jerry Kramer. Two teams with difficult losses a week ago. Seattle losing embarrassingly so to San Francisco and the Falcons dropping a heartbreaker to Dallas. Both will go with some young players today. Backups at quarterback for Seattle. It'll be a rookie untested, Kelly Stauffer. Kelly Stauffer has his work cut out for him, but so does the whole Seattle football team. Uh, Seattle was embarrassed last week. They had 154 total yards to San Francisco's 580. Kelly came in in the second half, had 11 of 15 for 133 yards, and played pretty well. This is his first NFL start, and the pressure is on Kelly Stouffer today. On the other side of the coin, the youth movement continues here in Atlanta. The number one pick in last spring's draft, linebacker Andre Bruce. He is expected to be an impact player, as yet he has not made that severe an impact. The Atlanta Falcons could be called the Peach Fuzz Gang. There are 30 players on that football team who are 26 years old or younger. I think the Atlanta football team is personified by Andre Bruce, a young man with great physical talent, great physical skills, 245 pounds, runs a 40-yard dash in 4-5, but has not played up to his potential yet. A little uncertain on his defensive assignments, not quite sure of where he should be at all times on the football field, but when he gets it together, it's going to be a great football team. Chuck Knox, the head man for Seattle. You can see what he has done over his entire career. Ten playoff teams he has coached. Marion Campbell, on the other hand, has had a career of rebuilding teams. Two stints here in Atlanta, and this is his second time through here down in Georgia. The Seahawks have won the toss. They have elected to receive. And that means that Greg Davis will go out there to kick it off for the Falcons. And he'll be kicking deep to either Randall Morris, there is Davis, or Bobby Joe Edmonds. Morris at the top of your screen. Edmonds doing his stretches down at the bottom. This kickoff is sponsored by Budweiser, the king of beers. Falcons coming in at one and three. The Seahawks two and two. Davis, who replaced Mick Luckhurst. Allows the crowd to get into it. We're underway in Atlanta. This is Edmonds at the two. He comes across the 20 before he is dropped. Down there first, Charles Dimry for the Falcons, number 22, as Stauffer leads the team onto the field. Offensively, he'll have the veteran Kurt Warner. John L. Williams banged up, a cracked rib. The great Steve Largen and Ray Butler at the wideout spots. And his big offensive line, Mattis, Bailey, Bush, Millard, and Wilson, who went to the University of Georgia, making his return home. First play of his career as a starting quarterback for Kelly Stauffer. He hands it off to Warner, and he finds the running room extremely stingy over that left side. Mike Gann, number 76, was up there first. He plays up front with Casillas and Bryan. Casillas and Rick Bryan, first-round draft picks. And then linebacking core led by Bruce. He's a first-round pick. Brady Tuggle and Joel Williams, the veteran. The secondary has given up some yardage passing. Butler, Case, Moore, and Clark. They're vulnerable.
good surprise in the opening moments. Uh, take a look at Andre Bruce, a fine linebacker for the Falcons, number 93, runs right past the ball carrier. He's more intent on warding off his blockers than he is on exactly where the ball is. Again, a young guy feeling his way, not quite sure of his assignment. Three wide receivers now for the Seahawks on third and eight. separation in the third game at San Diego against San Diego. He is expected to be lost for four to six weeks. We're going to try to get a closer look at what happened to Ray Butler as he went downfield. It looked like Bobby Butler stepped on his foot first and then rolled on it. Take a look at him right here, just on the coming into your uh, screen right here, closest to us, number 83. Bobby Butler covering right there. He does, Kevin. You're absolutely right. Steps on him and then rolls on him. is up now and he's walking off under his own power. Good to see that. Nine-year veteran from Southern Cal. Chuck Knox and his staff wanted to get Stauffer off to a very good start for his confidence. A little bit surprising, Jerry, that he threw deep with his first pass. Uh, yeah, it wasn't surprising that we saw Warner in the line a couple times, but uh, that deep a pass. But on the other hand, you know, you know, Marion Campbell, the Falcon coach, is sitting here. What's the kid going to do? He's going to throw square outs. He's going to throw screens. He's going to th throw something underneath some flares to the back. And the, and the coach says, hey, let's, let's cross him up. Let's throw it deep. Air it out the first shot. So, you know, the strategy will unfold as we go along. You saw Ruben Rodriguez dropping back to punt. Lou Barnes is deep for the Falcons. Rodriguez averaging nearly 45 yards a kick, and he hangs this Beautiful. one very high. Oh, he drives him deep inside his 30. Nowhere to go for Barnes, and he, in fact, loses a couple of yards on the return. M.L. Johnson, number 52, was there first, and now Falcons backup quarterback Steve Dills will lead his offense out there after a 49-yard punt from Rodriguez. Settle and Primus are not the regular running backs. They are placing and playing in the place of the injured Gerald Riggs, as well as Sylvester Stamps. Bailey and Dixon are out there. Wiz and Hunt playing because Higdon, the tight end, is hurt. They're really banged up. Ken Dukes rattle off the great Bill Fralick. Houston Hoover, a rookie, making his first start, and he's going up against a good one in Jacob Green. First down pass nearly intercepted but now caught and they get it across the 30 Primus was there to snare it but it looked as though Bruce Schultz nearly had himself an interception Terry Taylor on second and seven. They run it over the right side with Primus. He gets perhaps a couple. Paul Moyer, number 21 out of the secondary, along with Bosworth, number 55, there to greet him first. That'll bring up a third and four for the Falcons, their first possession. 
a very intelligent quarterback out of Stanford and a veteran. He won't get rattled down there very easily, but he is a short quarterback, just standing 5'10". On third down, he hits Primus, but he can't hold it. Vernon Dean was over there on the coverage for the Seahawks, and Primus will have to take that drop to the bench, and the Falcons will have to punt it away. And that really hurts. First of the day, nearly got it blocked, but he gets it off. Edmund signaling for a fair catch, and he does so at about his own 27-yard line. So that is where Seattle will put it in play first down. We'll return to Fulton County Stadium. More NFL football coming your way in a moment. We're back live in Atlanta. Kevin Slayton along with Jerry Kramer. Each team has traded punts here in the first quarter. We're scoreless. The Falcons and the Seahawks both looking to rebound from difficult losses a week ago. And maybe looking not to lose the game early, Kevin. Not make any mistakes. Don't give anything away. Let's be careful. Let's be cautious. Especially from the viewpoint of Seattle going with that rookie quarterback, Kelly Stauffer. He runs John L. Williams straight up the gut this time. Joel Williams, number 54 for the Falcons, is there. The outside linebacker, the veteran, to bring him down. John L. playing with a very painful rib fracture. Jerry, those things hurt. Boy, I tell you, I've been asked a lot if the kids today are as tough as they were when I played. I'm telling you, it, it takes a tough kid to play with a fractured rib. That is painful. And he picked up four yards that time. Brian Blades, number 89, in at wide receiver for the Seahawks to the bottom of your screen, replacing Ray Butler, who was injured on that last Series. Kurt Warner. No room around the side. Rick Bryan, number 77, chasing him down. The Falcons' number one pick in the 84 draft. Just excellent pursuit by uh, Rick Bryan in that whole defensive line. Watch the move here of Casillas. has tried to string it out, and you see John Ray D coming across there, but makes the tackle and we got a lot of pursuit by the whole defensive club six defensive backs in there now for the Falcons on a third and five they run it underneath with Williams he makes a nice move and is able to get close to the first down Marcus Cotton number 51 along with Greg Brown number 98 in there to get him and he is a little bit short still have to punt it away. Cotton there, you see him playing with a sprained ankle that hampered him and kept him out of the lineup last week. They're going to measure it now, so they're not so sure that he's short. We didn't expect to see much of Marcus Cotton today, maybe only on pure passing situations. See very little of him with that bad ankle. And I mean they're that short. So the punting team will return for Seattle. Two possessions and not a first down yet. That's not the kind of thing that Stouffer needs to build his confidence. Certainly not. Need to get a first down. Need to move that ball a little bit. Complete a couple of those short passes. Get a rhythm going. Get a, some movement going. Rodriguez nailed his last one. You see 49 yards. And hang time was excellent. Lou Barnes is deep. He gets another dance. At his 19. Dances his way to the 26 before he is brought down. First man there for the Seahawks was Spagnola, the tight end number 88. A 44 yard punt. Tommy Agee also down there to bring him down. There's a flag down way back at the original line of scrimmage. seven-yard return. They declined the penalty. We'll return to Atlanta for more NFL football. Back live in Atlanta, Kevin Slayton and Jerry Kramer. Marion Campbell on your left, Chuck Knox on the right. 35 years in the NFL for Marion Campbell, trying to rebuild this Falcon organization. 
Jackson and Chuck Knox, on the other hand, has known nothing but success. Ten times in the playoffs, coach of the year four times. These two teams doing battle here with the first quarter, nearly six minutes old. On first down, the Falcons straight up the middle with John Settle. scores from around the league. The Oilers out in front of the Eagles and Pittsburgh leading Cleveland. Those are early scores. Checking the ticker. Giants with a field goal over Washington and they lead early on. Steve Dills. He's been there before. He told me at practice the other day he really wasn't surprised to be thrust into a starting role so early with as many injuries as there have been around the league. for John Settle and Melvin Jenkins let him know that he's there. Normally a sign of good coverage when you have a quarterback take that much time, pumps two or three times, and, and finally has to throw it away. Take a look at the Jacob Green, 79, top of your screen, working against Houston Huber, the young rookie. Houston did a fair job, stand with him, stand in his face, whoa, and gives him just a little pat there at the end. Jesse Hester, number 89, in a one-wide receiver spot to the top of your screen for the Falcons. Third and seven. Bills again with a lot of time. Oh, oh, Hester, oh. and he eludes the defender. Hester is in Seattle territory inside the 40. He's still on his feet, out of bounds, inside the 30-yard line. Jesse Hester, new to the Falcons, lets everyone in Atlanta get introduced to him in a big way. Good protection. Steve Dills has plenty of time, and Hester makes a great move. The defensive back takes a shot here and falls down, and Hester has wide open country ahead of him. Gets a block downfield, takes it up the sideline, down to about the 30-yard line. Nice game. Paul Moyer was back there to stop him. They'll spot it at the 30. He's a game-breaker, Hester is. is settled. He gets around the corner near first down yardage up near the 20. Eugene Robinson number 41, the free safety stopped in there. It looked as though Settle really kind of just lost his own balance. Falcons with the most impressive offensive drive of the day to this point. John Settle doesn't always look pretty, but he's a producer. Every time he gets the ball, he gets yards. Coach Marion Campbell. Marion also said he has never let us down. And he ripped off a 62-yard run earlier in the season against Detroit. That is the longest in the NFL this year. Dills flips it outside to Primus. Trying to run away from one. He does. But Wyman, number 92, was able to get a hand on it. The success of Settle running the ball, Jerry, allowing Dills to be able to throw on first down situation. It makes a tremendous difference if you have more than one weapon in your attack. And the defensive line has just got to honor that run and cannot tee off on you. It makes a tremendous difference. Two tight ends in the game now for the Falcons as they send in Gary Wilkins, number 80, to replace Floyd Dixon. Second and seven. Houston the Hoover, Houston the Mover Hoover. I 
I guess that crowd boo was uh, in response to Boz's name on the PA system. Greg, widely loved all over the world. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Greg Davis learned how to place kit from his mother. And he nails that one. He is six of seven on the year. And that puts the Falcons on the board first. They take the three to nothing lead with 121 left. First quarter will return to Atlanta for more NFL football after this. Back live in Atlanta, Kevin Slayton along with Jerry Kramer. A scoreboard clock malfunction. You see 620 remaining in the first quarter instead of the 121 that we gave you when we went to the commercial break. Falcons on the board first thanks to the 32-yard field goal from Greg Davis. And he will tee it up and kick off to the Seahawks. Edmonds and Morris are deep. It's going to be Bobby Joe Edmonds at the goal line. He's a slashing type of return man who gets thrilled by Wilkins, the tight end who made that catch. And we were talking with Jack Faulkner, the scout for the Rams, who said Wilkins is a heck of a special teams guy. Take a look at the young rookie Houston Huber, number 69, blocking an all-pro Jacob Green on that last long pass play down the sideline. Stays in front of him, moves his feet well, keeps him away from the quarterback, and generally has been doing a fine job. There's a uh, Houston taking a sip of juice on the sideline right in the middle of your screen and a well-deserved rest. You like to see those young guys perform well at that position, don't you, Jerry? I do. Go for a first down pass under pressure. He does well to just get rid of it. Rick Ryan, Mike Gann were both in there. And it didn't fool Rick Ryan at all. Normally the only recognition the offensive line gets in a situation like this is when the quarterback gets rushed. You can see Rick Ryan putting a lot of heat on Kelly Stopper. It's nice to pick out a young man who you know has got to be nervous going up against an all-pro like David, Jacob Green. Doing a good job and say, hey, we're doing fine. Second and ten for Stopper, who has yet to complete a pass in his first start. We'll try it again. Has time, guns it complete to Mike Tice, the tight end. He's hauled down short of the first down. John Rady, number 59, the linebacker, was there, along with Robert Moore, number 34, the strong safety. You know, the Seattle offense generated 29 yards rushing last week. They had some problems with the quarterback, but they certainly had problems with their overall running game and in practically every phase of their football game. So while we need a performance from the quarterback, we also need a performance from everyone else on that football team. Third and one. Stouffer's offense has not picked up a first down yet. Warner in trouble, and I don't think they had it. They stopped him for a loss. Everybody was in there helping out. Jesse Tuggle, number 58, the second-year player out of Valdosta State was the first to get him. You like Jesse Tuggle, don't you? I like Jesse Tuggle, a free agent from Valdosta State. A lot of heart, a lot of courage. Watch this defensive surge. The offensive line is getting beat off the ball. Now, this is, the, you know, a play that the Seattle Seahawks should make. They should make short yardage, first down plays. Nothing to do with the quarterback. It's the people up front and the running back that should make that play.
Due to technical difficulties, the sound portion of your program is temporarily impaired. It is not your set. Please bear with us. We're working on it. In a great play. Steve Dills had plenty of time, went back, was very cool, very calm in the pocket, just simply throws the ball over the receiver's head. Can't get to it. Steve Jenkins is waiting there. Can get to it. Melvin Jenkins, excuse me, brings it back. Is tackled, fumbled, Wizen Hunt makes a recovery. Atlanta's ball. So the Falcons have an unorthodox first down. Bailey was open, Jerry. He was wide open. He, had, he really was wide open. There was no one around him. The ball was just simply thrown over his head. They reviewed the replay to see if he had fumbled, but it seemed pretty obvious that the ball popped loose. So it's a first down for the Falcons at the 43 yard line. setting the clock they're adding six seconds on it so all kinds of technical malfunctions with the clock here this afternoon and when it all gets started the Falcons will have it now at the 43 yard line first down with 425 left in the first quarter they run it with Primus over the right side big hole he breaks loose at the 45 inside the 45 down to the 41 
right in the middle of the... 72. Maybe 72, Joe Nash. I believe that's who it was, right in the middle of the uh, Seattle defensive line. First down for the Seahawks. They've yet to establish themselves offensively and pick up a first down. Stalford to throw on first down. He's going, going deep. deep. Blades is there. Who's going to come away with it? Bobby Butler or Brian Blades has it. Bobby Butler had that ball, but the tie goes to the receiver when they come down with it. Take a look at him coming right at you now. Kelly Stopper goes back, and Brian Blades is running the deep post. Bobby Butler goes up. Haynes, he gets close to the 20 before he is brought down. 
first guy down there. Laid a hand on him. Rufus Porter again down there on special teams, number 97. A reminder to our viewers that we'll be selecting the Budweiser most valuable player for today's game at the conclusion of the game. So stay tuned, and Jerry and I will be selecting uh, that recipient for you. First down for Steve Dills in the Atlanta offense. They go with the first man through. Settle breaking tackles. Gets close to the 25-yard line. Jerry, the Atlanta coaching staff the other day when we were talking to them at practice, very worried about how thin they were at the running back spot. But while worried about their depth, they weren't at all worried about these two guys, even though they're playing in substitution roles. Yes. Uh, losing Gerald Riggs, a three-time pro bowler, you would think would have a great impact on your offense. But John Settles has stepped in and played very well for him in the past. Second and four after that six-yard pick. Here comes Settle again to the left side. Running hard, he has a first down up at the 34-yard line before he is taken down by Alonzo Mitz, the third-year player out of Florida, number 61. Mitz, the kind of guy that Ralph Andrews, the Seattle secondary coach, was telling us yesterday, he'll run right over you. He a lot of energy. Mitz likes to refer to himself as the warrior. <laughs> the warrior's playing better. The warrior made that tackle. Kind of like a guy you guys went against a few years ago, the hammer, right? <laughs> Total difference. Under a minute left, first down for the Falcons. That one's deflected at the line, intended for Primus. Jeff Bryant, number 77, got a hand on it. Talking with Jack Faulkner, the Rams advanced scout before the game, he said Dills will get a lot of passes tipped as we check the ticker. Dills, of course, coming out of the Rams organization. Chicago still leading Buffalo. Nothing much changing in those games. The Packers holding on to their field goal lead in the second quarter. Our game, second and 10, 7-3 Seattle over Atlanta. 39 seconds left in the quarter. They run it again with Settle. He's up near the 40, short of the first down. Got to be Ken averaging Clark. six, seven yards a carry on that offensive uh, running game. They are impressive. They came into the game averaging 5.3 per rush, the Falcons did, and that's the best in the league. Now, this is a team that was dead last in total offense a year ago. Also a team that against San Francisco rushed for 196 yards in the secondary had a wrestling match on his hands and the crowd applauding the moves of settle a second year player out of tiny Appalachian State the end of the quarter seven to three Seattle leads we'll be back with more game number 60 was an unusual number for a quarterback but this player won with unusual regularity in 10 seasons as quarterback of the Cleveland Browns, he led his team to 10 championship games. Who was this the winningest quarterback ever? He may have been football's most skilled passer. Back live in Atlanta, Kevin Slayton and Jerry Kramer. The look at the numbers from the first quarter. Falcons able to run the ball, Jerry, and everybody thought they would be able to do that against Seattle. Exactly right. Up the middle. As we open the second quarter, 7-3 Seattle leading. Here goes Settle. He stared eye to eye with Bosworth and got away from him. Moyer came up to make the stop, number 21, but the Boz left grabbing air that time. Gave the Boz a little uh, hip move and a little straight arm. Take a look at the Boz here as he moves in to, to fill the hole. John Settle comes up, gives him a little move here, puts the straight arm out, and uh, leaves the Boz gasping and grasping. <laughs> I've got to ask you a little later how Vince Lombardi would <laughs> Second and nine after a pickup of one. They'll continue to run. Settle this Boz. time. This time the Boz maligned after that last play. <laughs> had his ears burning. And he came right through to make the first hit. Boz has a headset and heard us talking about him. Here's another ISO on him as you watch him move up into the line. Reads well, reacts well, makes a tackle behind the line of scrimmage this time. Excellent play. Some of the
the Seattle coaches saying yesterday, as good a player as he is, he doesn't have that nasty streak of a Butkus or a Nitschke. Dills to the air on third down. Down the middle, knocked away. Good job defensively from Vernon Dean, number 31. He just stayed right on Jesse Hester and made sure that he didn't come away with it. Dodge Cars and Trucks. On the street or off the road, it's the new spirit of Dodge. By City Corp, because Americans want to succeed, not just survive. And by United Airlines, airline of the 1988 U.S. Olympic team. Rookie Kelly Stoffer making his first NFL start for the Seattle Seahawks has his team out in front of Atlanta, 7-3. Kevin Slayton along with Jerry Kramer, 13-35 remaining in the first half. And they operate from their own 24-yard line, first down. Warner, the right side, ducks under a tackler, gets it up near the 28-yard line before he is brought down. Jesse Tuggle, number 58, the linebacker, there to make the stop. If you joined us late as you look at Warner, he'll hold all of the Seattle rushing records before he's done. It was a 53-yard Stauffer to Brian Blades pass that set up Warner's 12-yard touchdown run. At that point, Seattle had not mustered as much as a single first down. But the big play ability of Stauffer came to the front. Second down, Warner again. Eludes one tacker, but not Rick Bryan, number 77, who grabbed him and held on. Stop. 
Crawford to large and loosening it up a little bit for the running game to get going now. Seattle offense woke up with that long play in the first quarter and are continuing to run the ball well, throw the ball, and now look like the, a contender, look like a potential championship team. Their quarterback coach, Ken Meyer, told us yesterday that there's not an ounce of nervousness in Kelly Stauffer. And he hasn't shown any jitters yet. Warner again, they're getting a steady diet of Kurt Warner. This time they're ready for him near the original line of scrimmage. Scott Case ran him out of bounds, number 25. We checked the scores. The Bears adding to their lead over Buffalo. Houston uh, still leading over Philadelphia. And the Steelers, boy, Cleveland just in a lot of trouble in their quarterback situation. Those scores remaining the same into the second quarter. Our score, 7-3. The Seahawks over the Falcons. Stauffer is hit 3 of 5 for 93 yards. Largent had to wait till nearly the end of the game last week to keep the streak alive, but he continues it early today. The fake to Warner. Down the middle for Tice inside the five. Down to the one-yard line. Stauffer looks like a cool-handed veteran out there, Jerry. century and more, business travelers have depended on United Airlines to get them to their most important meetings. United, rededicated to giving you the service you deserve. Come fly the friendly skies.
path to success, reach for America's strongest financial helping hand, Citicorp and Citibank. More American families own their own homes and attend college with our help, and more get what they want with MasterCard and Visa cards from Citibank than from any other company. We also serve millions of customers in every major marketplace worldwide. Citicorp, because Americans want to succeed, not just survive. Fulton County Stadium, Kevin Slayton with the former Packer, Jerry Kramer, 14-3 Seattle. Johnson steps into it for the Seahawks. Michael Haynes, three yards deep, is going to bring it out. In trouble. Down he goes. Brian Blades, the rookie, got him. Let's go to New York and NFL Live for an update. Gail Searins. In Chicago, the Bears go up 14-3 over Buffalo. Jim McMahon splits the seam, hits number 84. Ron Morris, 63 yards for the touchdown. 14-3, Chicago in the second. Now back to Atlanta and Kevin and Jerry. All right, Gail, thank you very much. First down pass from Steve Dills. He has his man out in the flat. Gene Lang making his first appearance in the ball game. David Wyman over there, number 92. You know, touchdown pass that Gale mentioned in Chicago. Ron Morris may make some people forget Willie Gold. He's had a great uh, season so far with the Bears, hasn't he? Really has. And from some of the comments back and forth, I think some of the guys would like to forget <laughs> Willie Gold. <laughs> Second and five after they got five. They'll run it with Settle. Bust outside. There is Jenkins who mud wrestles under the turf on that infield portion of the field. You know, it's interesting, Jerry, a, a guy like Settle kept in the shadows. Not many people know of him, but yet everybody we talk to, from the coaching staffs of both teams to the advanced scouts from the Rams, all they keep saying is this guy can play football. This guy can play, and what a nice move on that last play, Kevin. That little dip to the outside. Things were clogged up in the middle. A couple little jab steps and, and dipped outside, and uh, what a nice move. Gerald Riggs watching from the sidelines. Partial ligament tear, had a hip injury earlier in the season. It's not where he likes to watch from. Now the play action. Dills has to hurry. Down he goes. I don't know how he held that ball. Jeff Bryant, number 77, with his first sack of the season, making his first start after missing training camp. Jeff Bryant uh, has been holding out and a little late reporting the training camp, and he's not late getting to Steve Dills right here. Beats the left tackle and gets his first sack of the season. His defensive linemen love that clean shot, don't they? Woo! It doesn't happen very often. You struggle, you struggle, you struggle, and so many things seem to get in the way, so many people. It doesn't happen very often. Loss of five. Second and 15. Dills flips it outside. Nice catch out there by Settle. Eludes two tacklers. Now is dropped as he crossed the 22. Vernon Dean, number 31, over there to make sure that Settle couldn't continue. Both uh, replacement quarterbacks, if that's the right word, uh, handling themselves pretty well so far. Neither has made the kind of mistake you might expect from a backup quarterback. Now, Dills uh, comfortable, uh, collected, calm, uh, setting back there, doing a pretty good job. See a guy walking through the stands with a Boz haircut and a Sooner jersey, number 44. He's number 55 now, and he's out there on the field. Dills down the middle, deep for Dixon, overthrew. Moyer was back there covering along with Patrick Hunter, number 23. If anything, Dills has been strong-armed. He's overthrown two receivers. Watch what happens at the end of that play if you ever think about playing quarterback. He gets in the middle of the zone there, and three three people surround him, and hello. Uh, Mr. Dixon really didn't want that ball that badly. There were a lot of other, a lot of traffic in the area. And Dills took a shot at the other end, and now Rick Donnelly on to punt it away. Bobby Joe Edmonds dropping deep for Seattle. He's back inside his 30. There's 40, I should say. Not a very good kick. Went off his inside of his foot. And Seattle has excellent field position when we return to Fulton County Stadium in Atlanta. That 
That's our story in Atlanta. Kevin Slayton along with Jerry Kramer. 5.51 left in the half. Kelly Stoffer has been poised, cool, and has led his team to touchdowns in each of their last two possessions, and they start this time at midfield. That's what he'd like to have for a young quarterback. Cut the field in half. John L. Williams, who scored their last touchdown. Twist inside the 45. Jesse Tuggle over there, number 58, the first to greet him. And then he got some help from John Rady, number 59. And that's really what you like to have for a young quarterback, second and five. They love that. Next week on NBC, we continue our NFL season. An exciting doubleheader, 12.30 Eastern NFL Live. Then the AFC's top-rated passers square off, the Jets and the Red Hot Bengals, followed by a battle by the bay when the Broncos take on the 49ers plus regional action. Check your local listings for the games and times in your area. Second down and four now for Seattle. Penalty in the game 
until Mattis moved for Seattle on the last possession, and now Dukes answers with a five-yarder of his own. A young, young football team. You're going to see those mistakes. You're going to see those errors, those kinds of things from a young football team as we look at the ticker. Cleveland going ahead of Pittsburgh and New England ahead of Indianapolis. Washington closing the gap on the skins. Dills to the air in trouble. He guns it low, and a sliding catch on the far side is well short of the first down. Wisenhunt made the grab. Boy, the rush was coming from Joan Ash. Joan Ash, the nose tackle, uh, beats the center, Wayne Radloff, right away and puts a lot of pressure on Steve Dills, and he is running and throwing and moving, and the ball is low and not that well thrown again, but pressure that time. Third down. When the game was on the line, I just dearly just loved it. I just loved the big game. Terry Bradshaw's romance with victory has been well documented. With four Super Bowl victories, Bradshaw created a reputation as the best quarterback in the biggest games. Perhaps the best athlete ever to play the position. Terry Bradshaw's talents and perseverance combined to make him a winner. Kevin Slayton along with Jerry Kramer. Two minutes left in the first half from Atlanta. The Seahawks trailed 3-0. Kelly Stauffer got his offense going and they drove to two consecutive touchdowns and they lead it 14-3. Atlanta faces third and nine from their own 19. Dills is hit on seven of 15 in the starting roll today. Down the middle he goes for Dixon. He's got it this time and drops it. And you can see how upset Steve Dills is as he walks off the field. See that? I didn't see if the defensive man might have got a hand on that. It looked like Dixon should have caught the ball. It was in the in his midsection. Bobby Joe Edmonds drops back for the Seahawks. Ball was a little bit late getting there, but he still was there and plenty of time to grab. It. Rick Donnelly to punt it away. Needs a good one, and he gets a good one. Sends Edmonds all the way back inside his 30, where he calls for a fair catch. 147 left in the half. We're coming back to Atlanta in a moment. Action Stauffer on first down to Kurt Warner. Makes a nice move. He's up to the 40. Has a first down out near the 45-yard line. Brett Clark, number 28. John Rady, number 59, combined to make the stop. The kind of safe pass that's good for a rookie quarterback in the two-minute drill, Jerry. Exactly right. It would be interesting to see what we do in the last two minutes here. Uh, Brian Millard out front there with a nice block for Kurt Warner, and uh, we've got a minute and a half to go. Let's move it down the field. Let's see what we can do. 16-yard pickup that time, a minute 10, and it's ticking away. They run the draw to John L. Williams. A little bit surprising. Gets across the 45. Tuggle was there, number 58, and Seattle. Stops the clock with a timeout. Don't know that I would have a draw play in a two-minute drill on a regular basis. <laughs> it's not conducive to being able to use the clock, is it? Well, thus far, we talked about how important it was for both of these teams to win this game at the top of the show and how important for that man, Kelly Stoffer, to make a good impression to the guy behind him, Chuck Knox. I would say so far, Jerry, he's passed the test. I would have to agree with that. It looked pretty good, and the rest of the Falcon football, or the, excuse me, the Seahawks football team is playing pretty good football, too. That offensive line up front is blocking well. Uh, Warner and John L. Williams are running the ball. Everybody is playing better football today. They got off to a cold start, didn't pick up a first down in their first three possessions, but then they have scored touchdowns each of their uh, two next possessions. So once Stouffer got it going with that 53-yard pass to Brian Blades, the rest of the offensive unit took off. The running game opened up. Seemed to catch fire after that, didn't it? Four wide receivers on second and eight. Out of the shotgun. Three-man rush. 
side for John L. Williams, heads to the sidelines, gets maybe a yard. Bobby Butler, who's returned to the Atlanta lineup, number 23, came up from the secondary to knock him out of bounds. This is a conservative two-minute drill. <laughs> <laughs> Hasn't thrown it downfield yet. <laughs> That's all right. Let him get let him get it, the feel of it. You know, he's, he, he's been throwing the ball well, been throwing it downfield well. You know, let him go for it now. You see, in that last shot, his nose looks like it's healing. <laughs> Wasn't that a play last week <laughs> where he threw that touchdown? That was really something. Got his nose broken on the play by Kurt Warner's teammate. He fell down. Stafford hit, got back up, had the presence of mind to fire a 46-yard touchdown to Ray Butler. In trouble. Bruce is there. His third of the season. <laughs> now you see a little excitement out of Andre Bruce and a little bit out of the crowd. The crowd came alive and started chanting Bruce, 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 like they did at Auburn when he was back there. Watch it coming in from the left side of your screen there. He just overpowers the tackle and makes a very impressive sack. Stauffer very fortunate to hold on to the ball. 6'5", 245, runs a 40-yard dash and 4'5". His teammates call him Drago. After the Russian boxer in, in the Rocky movies, he is, a, he is a very impressive physical specimen. And when he makes plays like that, he looks like Drago. report card. We talked about Stauffer passing the test. Kurt Warner has run well. And the, probably the biggest play of the game so far for their offense was that pass play to Blades. On the Falcon side, Dills has overthrown open receivers, Jerry, but they've been able to run the ball well. 62 yards running for Settle. That's a fairly uh, respectable first half. But for the Falcons, it's come between the 20s. Punch sailing high downfield. Oh, a great hit and a loose ball. No fair catch was signaled, and Seattle has it. I believe it was Melvin Jenkins that did it all. Made the hit and then recovered the fumble. Boy, uh, it certainly looked like you should have uh, called for a fair catch here. He certainly didn't know uh, where Melvin Jenkins was.
was the second pick after Bruce was taken in the first round. Didn't think we'd see much of Marcus Cotton today. Has had a sprained ankle, and we thought we might see him a little bit on passing situations, but we have seen him quite a bit. Stoffer is just going to throw a quick screen out to the right, and you can see Marcus Cotton fighting off the block and just letting the ball go off the end of his fingertips. but he overthrew him. Robert Moore was back there. Number 34 defending, so Seattle is going to face a third and 25. Well, this would be a great momentum breaker for Atlanta if they could hold the Seahawks after that fumble on the punt. And maybe some of you are wondering what a chop block is. Watch uh, number 75, Mike Wilson, on the right side of your screen come in and chop the legs out from under the defensive end. That is a chop block, and that's illegal. And a very dangerous one. And it destroyed their position, really. They were in position to score a touchdown. Moved them back 15 outs, third and 25. They run it underneath with John L. Williams. Good job defensively from Brett Clark, number 28, who smelled it and charged up from the secondary to stop him well short of the first down. Seattle just trying to improve their field goal position for Norm Johnson. John L. Williams playing with that cracked rib. Every time he carries the ball, I wince. <laughs> You've played with those before, I'm sure. Yes, I have. And, and uh, there really isn't a lot you can do for a cracked rib uh, as far as deadening the pain. It's something you just got to play with. some great plays like we've seen Marcus Cotton and Andre Bruce make and they're going to fumble the ball. They're going to be offsides. They're going to be inconsistent. That's exactly what's happening this afternoon. Michael Haynes has dropped deep for the Falcons as Johnson gets set to kick off with 10 seconds remaining. So Seattle has scored 17 consecutive points. And Johnson really gets his foot into this one decides to stay right there and they'll try it from their 20. Perhaps time for the old Hail Mary. The Falcons used to work that real well when Steve Barkowski was here. I think it's time for the one knee on the ground <laughs> and let's go in the locker room and talk it over. Play. They're, they're down 14 and they can ill afford another mistake here. We'll see what Dills does when he comes out of the huddle send Bailey wide to the top of the screen and Dixon wide to the bottom. They'll just ice it. Straight up the middle with Settle. Well, that'll add to his rushing statistics. He picks up 21 yards, so he'll be over 80 yards rushing for the first half. And they quickly call a timeout with two seconds remaining. Now we get down a little closer to the middle of the field and maybe we'll throw the Hail Mary. I don't know how far Dills can throw that ball. He doesn't have the wrap on him is the arm strength. Doesn't have the strong arm that a Chris Miller has to see him there out with that sprained ankle. And as we talk about Settle who has 82 yards rushing in this first half and how everybody likes him. Equally impressed is everyone with the young quarterback Miller. I tell you I'm impressed with Chris Miller. We were talking yesterday and he told me about going to Atlanta and 
shooting a 70 or to Augusta and shooting a 75 on the course down there where they play the Masters, and that impresses me. And a lot of pro golfers in the tour would like to shoot a 75 down there. Very talented young man. Don't forget, we'll be going to NFL Live at halftime to catch you up to date on all of the happenings around the NFL. Triple wide receivers to the bottom of the screen. Dills will throw it up there. He guns it deep down the middle, and it is intercepted. Nesby Glasgow, the veteran out of the University of Washington, formerly with the Colts, picks it off, and that kills the Falcons' last gasp here in the first half. So they will go into the locker room trailing Seattle 17-3. NFL Live halftime activities will be coming up in a moment. We'll be right back after these messages from your local station. Welcome to halftime. Len Berman with Paul McGuire. As you see, Seattle bouncing back nicely from their San Francisco debacle last week. All the scores and highlights, some interesting results so far. Chicago, big over undefeated Buffalo. It is 24-3 as they approach halftime. And Walter Payton watching from the sidelines, the former Bear, loving what he sees from Jim McMahon. He's having a big afternoon against the Bills defense. Nobody's been able to do this yet this year, but the Bears have solved the riddle. This is Ron Morris connecting with McMahon. 63 three yards. Chicago took a 14 to 3 lead. How's it going for Jim Kelly of Buffalo? Well, driving fires the perfect pass to the crossbar. That's what you call a perfect post pattern, Paul McGuire. <laughs> That's what you run to the post, you hit the post. We did the feature at the beginning about the Chicago Bears. Number one on defense, number one in rushing and offense. They have a, a variety of things. Neil Anderson said that. Jim Kelly's having this problem. The Bills, when they get inside the 20, cannot score. They can't score against the Bears. And they're struggling today. A wild one going on in Philadelphia. Houston led 16-0. The Eagles have now come back to take the lead 17-16. As Buddy Ryan has had a certainly an up-and-down day for him, particularly for his punter, John Telschick. First quarter, it is blocked by Eugene Seal of Houston, Chris Dishman of Purdue with the touchdown. But wait, more to come. Telchuk goes to punt once again in the first quarter and once again is blocked, this time by Eric Fares for a safety. 9-0. It was 16-0 before the game was seven minutes old. But Glanville's cheers would turn to groans as the Eagles came back. Randall Cunningham to Greg Garrity. Gorgeous play for the touchdown. 17-16. Garrity replaced Mike Quick, who broke his leg. He is out eight to nine weeks. Now, Indianapolis at New England. The Colts have just scored as they near halftime. It is 7-7. Dickerson's already near 100 yards. Pittsburgh leads Cleveland 9-7. That game in the second quarter. Your game, Seattle over Atlanta, 17-3 at halftime. I'd like to show you one highlight from this game. Kurt Warner, as he is having a fine afternoon. 12 yards, touchdown, fourth touchdown this year. Seattle took the 7-3 lead, and of course, Steve Largent has caught a pass in 157 straight games. The Giants and Lawrence Taylor back. He has two sacks, 17-9 over Washington. The Battle of the Bays, Green Bay, and Tampa Bay. They are 10-10 as they near halftime. More of our NFL Live halftime activities coming up right after these words from your local station. Back at halftime, I'm Gail Searins. Earlier on our pregame show, we talked with Dr. Robert Void, chief medical officer of our Olympic team. He spoke about the use of performance-enhancing drugs by top-flight athletes. He estimated that as many as 50% of the players in the NFL use steroids, and he suggested that the only way to curb drug use is to test players on 48 hours notice instead of the current policy of telling them well in advance when they'll be tested. For some, this kind of surprise testing raises questions of civil rights violations. John Wiestart of Duke University Law School is a specialist in sports law. He is joining us now. Doctor, would testing an NFL player on 48 hours notice violate his constitutional right? Uh, Gail, a lot of the, the public discussion that one hears in the newspapers about testing suggests that the common issue that runs throughout all testing is, is this question of a violation of civil rights. I think it's really important to make clear and, and just as crystal clear as we can that in the context of the NFL the Constitution does not come into play that the NFL is essentially a, a private employer and the whole issue in the NFL is one of labor relations and that is does the employer have the authority either from the collective bargaining agreement or from some other source to engage in testing so it's really not a question of civil rights it's really it's much more a question of what did the parties agree to at the bargaining table so they can in fact negotiate away their constitutional right as it were 
Again, uh, they would not be negotiating away a constitutional right because the, the Constitution doesn't come into to play. But it does indicate a, a really important uh, point about what's going on in the NFL, and that is that we're in a period now where collective bargaining has broken down. So there, there is a, a bit of a legal cloud that hangs over the NFL's testing program, that cloud would be eliminated if we ever got to the point where, again, the union and the employer were able to find their common ground at the bargaining table. If that happened, we would then essentially have the situation we have in the NBA, where as far as I know, nobody is raising any legal controversy about the enforceability of the NBA, uh, the NBA drug testing program. What is the difference between testing, say, an NFL player versus an NCAA player and an Olympian? There's, there really is a very significant difference. Uh, your question about constitutional rights is directly applicable where NCAA athletes are involved. In the case of Olympic athletes, obviously the, the U.S. Constitution doesn't have any application. Uh, the events uh, involving Ben Johnson affected a Canadian citizen who was running in Seoul, Korea. So we, we shouldn't be so presumptuous as to assume that our Constitution would apply. The NFL, again, is entirely different. The, uh, it's not a question of international law. It's not a question of the U.S. Constitution. It's a question of what happened at the bar bargaining table, and it's a really pretty good example, again, of the extent to which the employer, the NFL owners, really need the union, and what they need is uh, a, a testing program that the union has agreed to. If that happens, as, as we can expect it eventually will, then any residual legal issues essentially will go by the board, and, and the testing program will be upheld. Very interesting, and thank you for being with us. Thank you, Gail. Obviously, steroids are a problem, whether we're talking about the NFL or an amateur athlete, and something has to be done about it because it poses a serious health risk. It sure does, and the question has to be, how far will athletes go to try to enhance their performance? Will they endanger their own lives? Well, Dr. Robert Voy of the U.S. Olympic Committee told us a chilling tale. Uh, I don't know whether you're aware, but some years ago, prior, I think, to the 84 Games, a study was done that... Uh, on a group of athletes, uh, Olympians, asking them the question whether or not if you, they took a pill, an anabolic steroid in particular, that uh, would uh, mean a gold medal for them. Uh, however, having taken the pill, they would die in five years from the uh, result of the, of the medication. Would they indeed take the pill? Over 50% responded that they would indeed take it. Uh, that's, that's the danger of these particular substances. It's, uh, the drug is so pervasive and uh, so capable of, of, of putting on muscle uh, and increasing strength that it's difficult to control. Thank you. It's whole new meaning to winning isn't everything. It's the only thing. We'll be back with more of our NFL Live halftime activities in just a minute. at Fulton County Stadium. We're at halftime where the Seattle Seahawks have scored 17 unanswered points and they hold a 17-3 lead over the Atlanta Falcons here at the half. Kevin Slayton alongside Jerry Kramer. And really there were two plays that got Kelly Stauffer's offense going in the first half. They had had to punt each of their first three possessions. They did not pick up a first down on any of those possessions. And then an injury occurred to Ray Butler, one of his wide receivers, and the rookie Brian Blades out of Miami came in to replace him. And it was a big play between the two rookies that got him going, Jerry. It was a big play, Kevin, and it seemed to get the whole Seattle offensive team uh, on fire. We watched Kelly Stauffer go back and airs it out. Brian Blades goes down the field. You see Bobby Butler, the defensive back for the Falcons, get first possession of the ball, but in the ensuing struggle, Brian Blades comes up with the ball and the possession, and that really started the offense rolling. And it was 14-3 to late in the half when Seattle had to punt and Lou Barnes was back deep for the Falcons. Bad news. Bad news. Should have called for a fair catch here. Didn't uh, judge uh, Mr. Jenkins' presence all that well. Jenkins hit him a good lick, fumbled the ball, and Jenkins made the reception and another big play for the Seahawks. And that resulted in a 44-yard field goal from Norm Johnson to give them the 17-3 lead that they now enjoy. So the Seahawks taking advantage of the big play and the break. And we'll be right back after after these messages from the National Football League. Back 
live Fulton County Stadium, Atlanta. 17-3 Seahawks at the half. Kevin Slayton along with Jerry Kramer. The tail of the tape from the first half. And if you look at the rushing statistics for the Falcons, keep in mind that Settle has 82 of those yards rushing. They've averaged, Jerry, 6.9 yards per rush, and yet they're down 14 points. Just uh, haven't been able to get the passing game going, obviously. 7 of 17. Um, a little fits and starts. Uh, no cohesion. Can't keep anything going. The running game's looking great. Uh, Dills on a few shorter passes looking pretty good, but uh, overthrowing the longer passes and just can't keep a rhythm going. Can't get a smoothness going. Atlanta came into this game averaging better than five yards per rush to lead the NFL on their 6.9 here at halftime. Will not hurt that at all, but they have not been able to turn that into any points. So thus the question begs answering, what do they have to do, Jerry, to turn things around in the second half? Well, they're so close. Uh, I, as we said, they're rushing the ball well. They're, they're doing a lot of good things. They've made a couple mistakes. The fumble was a mistake because we didn't fair catch the ball. Uh, we've overthrown our receivers a couple times, the receivers who were wide open. Uh, it's, it's things like that, offsides a couple times, a couple penalties. We have to reduce the mistakes, reduce the mental errors, and just continue to run the ball and throw the ball when we can and take what they give us. On the other hand, the first half of Kelly Stauffer in his very first start, remember now, he was drafted as a number one pick two years ago by the Cardinals. They didn't sign him. Stauffer, citing principles, sat out the entire year. Then was traded to Seattle for a first rounder, a fifth rounder, and a sixth rounder. And after that season of, of non-activity where he threw to a curtain in his old <laughs> high school gym, Stauffer has come out here and looked like a cool, poised veteran. Was not expected to play this year. Uh, the feeling was in Seattle that we have two veteran quarterbacks. Uh, we'll give you a lot of time to adjust, a lot of time to learn the system. We'll give you some wide receivers to throw at instead of the curtain. <laughs> Take your time. Uh, no hurry and all of a sudden bingo he's thrust into the position much sooner than anyone anticipated and is doing a pretty decent job. Michael Haynes deep for the Falcons this kickoff is sponsored by Budweiser the king of beers. Not too many speedy wide receivers in Rushville Nebraska for Stouffer to throw to. Boy, Johnson has pinned the Falcons in their end zone on these kickoffs. That's the second one that they haven't been able to return. They tried to return another one from three yards deep and didn't make it to the 20. So a dying art in the NFL uh, is revived by Norm Johnson today. So the Falcons will have first crack at it offensively. The big turnover on the fumbled punt. Bills had a pass intercepted, but it was fumbled on the return. So those were the only miscues that resulted in any turnovers in the first half. And here's Primus in trouble. Dropped Tony Woods. Great defensive play. Number 57 knifing through there. Second year man out of pit. He was a number one pick in the 1987 draft. Both of these teams drafting well with their number one picks. A lot of number ones on the field today. Boy, there's a lot of fine young linebackers in football today. The outside linebacker has become the glamour defensive position. Used to be the middle man was the man that got all the tackles and all the notoriety, but the outside guys are doing it today. Loss of five, second and 15. Dills underneath to settle. Makes a nice move on Bosworth. Has the first down. Yardage? No, not quite. He picked up 14, but again, Boz was left grabbing the air. John Settle is an exciting football player. I like to get the ball to him just any way you can get the ball to him, whether it's a handoff or a short pass across the middle like this. Watch number 55, the Boz grabs some air there. Settles gives him a move and comes awfully close to the first down. Pick up a 14 makes it third and one. Baugh is about the only inside linebacker that still does get his share of publicity. <laughs> Double tight ends. Primus runs into his own man. 
spins off with a great second effort to pick up the first down. Bosworth made the tackle that time and got some help from Melvin Jenkins, number 24. Well, do you think Coach Lombardi could have handled him? Boy, I think there had to have been some adjustments. <laughs> maybe some adjustments by the Boz and maybe some adjustments by Coach Lombardi. He, uh, Coach Lombardi didn't like blue shirts. He thought blue shirts were a sign that you were spending too much time on outside activities. He'd have gone bananas over the <laughs> colored haircut. <laughs> He may have clipped some of that air himself. Settle trying to elude Bosworth this time. It's tripped up over on the far side. Paul Moyer, number 21, came out of the secondary to help out, and now they get going over there. Some of the tempers flaring. Hunter's in there along with Moyer. Lloyd Dixon's going to lose that battle. He's just 5'9 and 170 pounds. <laughs> Even though Moyer and Hunter aren't a whole lot bigger, two on one is still not good odds. <laughs> no matter where. Atlanta doing about what they should the second half, moving the ball on the ground, short pass across the middle. If they can keep the have the patience to continue this, they might score. Two tight ends. They've gone with that nearly exclusively here in the second half. First man through his Primus flag is down. And now they're going at it. Bailey and another flag goes down. Bailey came in there and picked up where Dixon left off, battling Patrick Hunter in the secondary. One flag on the play, and then we have another flag after the play was dead, and we'll allow the officials to sort that out, because that's a mess. And that's what they get paid for. <laughs> officials have been very quiet today. There haven't been many flags, only two in the first half. Now this is the third. Actually, the fourth, if you count the second one after the play. Second, 
Robinson. Great defensive play from Eugene Robinson, number 41. Boy, Wilkins was there, but it, a little bit slow in getting there. The receiver was wide open. Uh, Dills pumps a couple, three times. Watch now as he starts to throw, starts to throw. Oh, a little indecision. And when the ball gets there, the defender gets there also. And just barely gets there ahead of the ball it out of his hands. Could have been a touchdown very easily. Interesting call on third and two, and now Greg Davis will come on. They'll spot it at about the 22, 32-yard attempt. He is perfect. So Davis and the Falcons get a much-needed three points in their first possession of the second half. 11 minutes left, third quarter. 17-6 Seattle. Field goal from that man, Greg Davis, 17-6. They trail the Seahawks. Kevin Slayton, Jerry Kramer, Bobby Joe Edmonds down there awaiting the kickoff. 11 minutes left, third quarter. We're going to talk a little bit about the play selection of the Falcons on that last series in a moment after the kickoff. A high kick. Comes down to Randall Morris. Flag sails in. Morris breaking tackles up to the 34-yard line. But we'll wait and see what the flag is about. Thrown right at the feet of Mike Tice. sorted out. The Falcons averaging better than six yards per rushing play, third and two deep in Seattle territory, and they throw the ball. Drive me bananas as an offensive lineman. Um, I like to throw the ball in certain situations, but when we need two yards, we're down near the goal line. I would rather run the ball. What was that call? Finally worked against Seattle, moves them back to the 10-yard line. And they'll start out first down, so that puts Stouffer in a hole. I wonder what the reaction in the huddle was. Patience now, and poise. Patience and poise. A big test for the Atlanta defense. Here's Warner. Flags are down. Warner breaks outside, picks up seven or eight. Bobby Butler, number 23, runs him out. I knew I shouldn't have spoken about the lack of flags earlier because we've had a slew of them the last two series of downs. There's no play. again jumping the call. Will the Seahawks go back any further? Stoffer will be thrown from the end zone. And this is a situation, that, precisely the situation that you want to avoid with the young quarterback. First and 15, third and 10, those absolute passing situations where the defense knows exactly what you're going to do, where they can tee off on you, they can gamble a little bit with you, and uh, pick off a pass or cause you some more trouble. He'd be doing it from his own end zone. Now five penalties against the Seahawks that have hurt them for 50 yards. This is where the Falcon defensive unit can smell a Will turnover. Will the clock operator please reset the clock to 10.50. 10.50 before the false start. Thank you. There was no play ruled because they had blown the play dead at the moment the false start took place. And they add six seconds back onto the clock. So first and 15 for Stauffer. Well, Ken Meyer told us yesterday, his quarterback coach, that this kid has nerves of steel, doesn't get rattled. If he's going to, this would be the spot. Kurt Warner. And that's the way to take the pressure off your quarterback. Absolutely. Kurt Warner, Pro Bowl player, one of the finest, the finest runner in the history of the Seattle franchise. Great performer, pressure player. When you don't know what to do, give the ball to Kurt. The only times he has missed rushing for 1,000 yards in his pro career, the first time when he got injured in the very first game of the year and missed the rest of the season, then he came back from that knee injury to have back-to-back 1,000-yard -back seasons, and then last year he missed it by 15 yards, but he missed three games because of the strike. Second and 10. More like second and 11, really. Stauffer to the air. Time incomplete flags are down. That's the kind of pass when it gets tipped around that usually gets picked off. That's dangerous. That's nervous. But again, it was a it was a not a dangerous pass initially. It, that tip when it went flying through the air is where the danger came from. Boy, this is a big penalty against the Falcons. First down. Usually those 
mistakes come from a player without the experience of Williams, a 10-year veteran. It's only a five-yard penalty, but it looms large. Seattle out to their 14-yard line. Stauffer on first down has time. Safe pass for Tice, but he only gains about a yard or two. The big tight end who was injured momentarily on that kickoff return awakens to make a sliding catch. It looked like that leg might have been bothering him a little bit more there, but I guess not. The scores, the Bears handling Woo! Buffalo easily. Philadelphia has made a comeback down 16 to nothing. They've scored 20 straight. Pittsburgh regaining the lead over the Browns at the half. Indianapolis has scored a tie to England. The Giants pounding the Redskins with all the quarterback injuries as the Packers and Tampa Bay tied at 10. And the biggest one, I guess, in terms of notoriety, Doug Williams having that happen next one. Second and nine, Warner on the delay. A hole over the left side, but not for too long. He really got busted. John Rady, who held out in training camp, six-year veteran out of Boise State, really put the shoulder in the curtain. The linebackers for the Falcons are playing Excellent football. Two guys in the middle, Huggle and Ray D, playing very well. Andre, not that consistent, but again, a pretty good football player, even at this early stage. Linebackers are good, solid football players. Third and two for the Seahawks. They'll go out of the shotgun. Only one of seven on third down, but they lead 17-6. Stouffer has avoided the mistake to this point. Warner cannot hold it. Is it a fumble? Yes, it is. It's going to be an Atlanta touchdown. Robert Moore. No, another official waves it off. Now, this will be interesting, Jerry. I'll bet you they'll review it. The official right in front of the play called it a fumble. Another official came over and ruled it incomplete. The official running across the field waving his hands in a no-play signal that the ball was down or there wasn't a catch. We pause briefly for station identification. This is the NBC television network. The 
Ralph Hawkins was telling us yesterday that he analyzes his Seattle defense to a baseball pitcher that you can't just throw fastballs because somebody's going to knock it out of the park, so they have to mix it up a little bit, but they have not been able to mix it enough successfully to stop Atlanta on the ground. Here they come again with Primus. This time, Bosworth sticks the shoulder in there and stops him cold. And he also said that he expected them to try to run up the middle. And they're going to try to run on us, and they certainly have. Although the Seahawks defense shut that off very well. Boz is on the sidelines, or is he checking his hat here for a minute? He's checking his headgear, letting everybody see Probably the hairdo. Maybe the stereo system broke down. <laughs> <laughs> 7.05 left in the third quarter. Big third and six. Four wide receivers for the Falcons. Dills going oh, for it all. Yeah. Bailey's wide open. That's a touchdown.
they face third and 11 here. Uh-oh, Stoffer has some room. Close to being in front of the line of scrimmage, but he found a large A flag goes down, and I think indeed he was past the line of scrimmage. Awful close, but it looked like he stepped across the line of scrimmage before he threw the ball. unit much maligned holds Kelly Stoffer of the offensive team now for the second time in a row and Atlanta will take over again in pretty good position pretty good field position watch Stoffer just awfully close to that line but you can see the official standing there on the sidelines watching and made the correct call fourth down Rodriguez to punt it away Rubens had a pretty good day since that first one that went 49 his average is dipped. He hit a bad one the last time. Lou Barnes has fumbled one so far that gave Seattle a field goal at the end of the first half. There's a high one. Not as deep as he would have liked at the 31 Barnes. Runs into his own man. A flag is down all over the place. In the line of scrimmage, downfield. So we'll let him sort it out. Four points, Seattle lead. signals that it's against Atlanta. But there's more than one down there. More than one flag. Holding number 30 on the receiving team, the defense. Five-yard penalty from the previous spot. Automatic first down. Oh, what a big play. David Crudup committed the infraction. We'll come back to Fulton County Stadium in a moment. stay here we'll take a break in a few moments but boy I'll tell you Jerry uh, that's the kind of play that a young team makes and I guess the kind of plays that Atlanta has been victimized by the kind of mistake a young team makes and a silly mistake in a, a, a position that you just can't afford to make a mistake in right when the defense had held twice consecutively and all of the momentum belonging to Atlanta great field position and now Seattle has it first down John L. Williams He's tripped up as he crosses a 30-yard line. And not only do you retain position of the ball from your, if you're from Seattle, but again, that psychological boost that, hey, we got a break. Hey, it's coming back to, to us. It's hot. We got it again. Let's go with it. And the defense, we stopped them. And now, hey, what happened? We have to stop them again. So there's a little bit of a letdown defensively and a pickup offensively. And often that can change the momentum in a game. And it allows Williams to pick up five yards. You can just sense that feeling of the air going out of the Falcons' balloon. He gets rid of it incomplete. The strong rush came from Tony Casillas, another of the Falcons' number one draft picks. Andre Bruce was back there defending. Tony Casillas playing nose tackle for the Falcons. As we watch Andre Bruce, 93, limp off the field. Doesn't appear to be serious. A little bit sore, but nothing serious. It's hard to say Tony Casillas has got a difficult task in there. Is, is quite an effort, quite a, an accomplishment. Stauffer, 6 of 13 now, 118 yards, third and five. Not much success in the second half for him. There's Largent. Has the first down. Boy, Largent knows where those sticks are. Scott Case, number 25, defending. First, first down of the second half for Seattle, other than the one on the penalties. Steve Largent, 13th year, mature, Intelligent, poised. What more can you say? Gets the first down, catches the ball as he has seven.
765 times now or something like that. It's old hat. Owns the yardage record for a career, the reception record for a career, and with four more touchdown catches, will own that and become the first player in over 40 years to lead in all three of those categories at the same time. First down for Stauffer. Hits John L. Williams, who's immediately buried. Jesse Tuggle, number 58, was there. So was help from teammate Michael Reed, number 95, who gets up off the bottom of the pile. There wasn't much room for John L. Williams there. The Falcon linebackers close to the line of scrimmage did not drop deep in pass coverage, so there just wasn't any room at all. What a courageous effort again from John L. Williams playing with a fractured rib and a flak jacket on. And he really took a shot that time. Second and seven after they picked up three. Sixth-year player out of Tennessee. 
C, and that's his first carry. Tommy Kane and Paul Scancy, number 81 and 82, check in for the Seahawks at wide receiver. They're going to look at third and four. John L. Malone setback, shotgun for Stoffer. Quickly incomplete intended for Blade. Flag goes down. Charles Dimry, number 22, was defending. Blades tried to run that quick slant. Two big penalties in this drive, working against Atlanta if this one indeed does that. Pass interference. Number 22 defense. Automatic first down. Goal to goal. It looked like uh, Demery got his hands on the blades as he came inside. One stopper. You can't see much of the pass interference call, but it appeared like he got a hold of him and uh, held him, uh, Demery, as, he, as, he, as Blades tried to get into the end zone. touchdown. Warner out in front to lead the blocking. So the Seahawks immensely aided by two Atlanta penalties. One on a fourth down punt that was a holding call. Another on a third down incompletion of pass interference. John L. With a touchdown. John L. Williams on the sidelines there. We noticed that he left the ball game for a few plays, but we get close to the goal line. You see number 32 taking the ball around the right side. Blocked by Kurt Warner, number 28, allows him to get into the end zone. But when we get close, when we're getting ready to score, 32 comes back in the ball game. Carrying 226 pounds with him. His second rushing touchdown today, Norm Johnson. With 40 seconds left in the third quarter is perfect. 24 to 13, the Seahawks increase their advantage and regain the moment. 11 points, Seattle lead, 40 seconds left third quarter. Kevin Slayton and Jerry Kramer live from Fulton County Stadium in Atlanta. And if you're just joining us and missed that last drive, the Falcons had regained all of the momentum with 10 quick points here in the third quarter, trailed by just four. And then on a fourth down punting situation, Seattle kicked it away. The Falcons guilty of holding. Automatic first down, they moved down, and on third down, threw incomplete in the end zone. Pass interference against the Falcons. The second break, and they converted it into a touchdown run. Now Johnson, a high kick. Haynes a yard deep. Boy, he's dropped short at the 15. Great coverage on these kick teams by Seattle. Nesby Glass, the number 22 down there. Steve Dills was ready to come on the field the last time, had to stay back because of the penalty. And the scoring drive for Seattle, impressive, aided by those two penalties. And Jerry, now you wonder mentally if these Falcons on offense can come back. But we'll find out right here. They've got a 70. Seahawks now. It certainly does. The Atlanta team has made several mistakes. A young football team that uh, you would expect to make some mistakes. The Seahawks, the older veteran team, should be able to put some pressure on, but Bailey AC coming Bailey again. Coming back to the ball, and Bills has a big completion there. Well, Stacy Bailey has only two catches, but they have been biggies. Bailey led all receivers last week, even with Jerry Wright. 
Price's great uh, week with 169 yards and looks like he's going to do it again this week. The, Falcon, the Seahawks maybe weren't quite ready for a, a bomb like that and perhaps didn't think Dills could throw the ball that far. We'd been told earlier that he was pretty decent on short passes, but his long passing game was suspect, and you watch his reaction with us. Yeah! First down pass play now, back to the action. That wakes up the echoes, that 50-yard completion. Now a veteran, cool under fire, just throws it away. We were talking to Steve Dills the other day, and uh, I asked him what he thought of Bosworth, and he bugged him, and he said, you know, he doesn't make an impact on a game from where he plays on the inside in that 3-4 defense. It's really not possible for an inside linebacker to do that. That's not right. The impact linebackers are now the outside linebackers, like uh, Marcus Cotton and Andre Bruce that we've seen today. And um, young boy Woods from uh, the Seahawks. Tony Woods. Tony Woods. In there now, number 57, second and 10. They run it. Settle again into the middle of the line. Joe Nash is there, all 269 pounds of him. Number 72, along with Bosworth, number 55. And you would expect this uh, Seattle defense to kind of rise to the occasion now. This is a veteran defense. Uh, we know exactly what the situation is. We're getting in the fourth quarter. It's time to jump up and stop somebody. Third and eight for the Falcons. Four, four wide receivers. Settle alone in the backfield. Good rush. Okay. Down he goes from behind Jacob Green. He leads the league in sacks, and that is number six. And Donnelly will have to come out with a punting unit. Big defensive stand from the Seahawks. Number, that's his first sack of the day. The young tackle we showed you earlier, Houston Huber, there on the right side of your screen, trying to stay in contact. Dill steps up into the pocket. Jacob Green makes the sack and stops that Atlanta offense in its track. Well, you said it was time for Seattle's defense to take a stand, and they did. Donnelly trying to pooch it inside the 10. He's got people down there and hit the official. He's going to bring it out to the 20. Boy, Crudip for Atlanta was down there in great position. So another and special teams error by Crudip. He was guilty of the whole should have middle. stopped the ball there. Watch him. He was in position to stop the ball from going into the end zone. He misjudged it, hit the ground, took a hard bounce, and certainly would have gone in the end zone if it hadn't hit the uh, referee. We'll return to Atlanta 13-01. Remi Back live, Kevin Slayton along with Jerry Kramer. That's the story from Atlanta. Falcons had gotten back into it, but big penalties against them hurt them and allowed Seattle to get a touchdown late in the third quarter to increase their lead. Now Seattle has it first down at the 20 after still another special teams mistake when Crudup let the ball get past him. It hit the official at the one and bounced dead, and they moved it out to the 20. Now, Jerry, in a passing situation, if the ball hits the official, he doesn't turn around and say, well, if the receiver was wide open, he would have caught it. Let's give it to him. <laughs> But here they're saying, well, it would have gone into the end zone. Let's put it at the 20. You got the feeling that it never happened to that <laughs> official before. Yeah. And he just thought this would be the best way to get out of that and the quickest. <laughs> and the quickest is right. He, he moved it out there quickly. First down, a running play. Warner tripped wow. up. He didn't get much. Mike Gann, number 76, second round pick out of Notre Dame five years ago. Bears well in hand over Buffalo. Philadelphia with a great comeback. 27 straight points. Cleveland leading Pittsburgh in a defensive struggle. Green Bay, Tampa Bay are tied. Oh, Washington really mounting a comeback. They were down 24 to 9. Good ball game. Close. The balanced NFL showing it today. Our score 24-13. Seattle, they face second and nine. Stolfer on the sprint out. Floats it for Tice. Oh. He did not hang on. He was juggling it going out of bounds. He gets up and shows everybody he did catch it, though. Yeah, Mom. <laughs> Caught it a little late. 
actually made the catch, as we all saw, but did not have possession of it as he went out of bounds. Stopper decides to roll out a little bit, which is a pretty good idea. Gives him a little extra time, and the, the ball quacks a little bit on its way to the intended receiver. And uh, Tice bobbles the ball, does not have control of the ball before he goes out of bounds. No catch. This young Falcon defense is about to uh, do something of their own. Third and nine. Excellent accuracy from Stauffer, though, on the run with a closely covered receiver. See how he does here. Atlanta needs a big play. Out of the shotgun for Stauffer. Going deep down the sideline for Scancy. Double coverage. He makes a leaping catch, but he's out of bounds. I don't know how he even caught that with two players all over him. Stauffer was right on the mark again. Scancy going down the sidelines. The ball's awfully close, awfully close. Oh, he just couldn't get those feet in bounds. He was just a, a few inches away from being in bounds with that reception. Great concentration, great catch, just slightly out of bounds. You could have heard the collective backs of the Falcon defense breaking had he been able to get his feet in bounds. Now Rodriguez touches off a high punt, but very short. Fair catch, Bond. He makes sure this time, and the Falcons are in business at their own 46. 11.58 left. They trail by 11. We'll return to Falcons. Today's game is brought to you by Mazda and the exciting new Mazda cars and trucks for 1989. By CityCorp, because Americans want to succeed, not just survive. And by Budweiser, proud sponsor of the 1988 U.S. Olympic team. This Bud's for you. A day that has threatened rain all afternoon. It's held off after an overnight and early morning rain. Seattle leading 24-13. Kevin Slayton, Jerry Kramer, 11:58 left. Falcons on the move. First down. They're settled down the middle. Great move inside the 40, inside the 35 of Seattle before he is dropped by Paul Moyer, number 21. Settle has put the move on several of the Seattle linebackers today. That time it was Dave Wyman. Watch as uh, Dills goes back, throws it almost underneath the defensive player's arm. There comes Wyman, and a nice move down the field by John Settle. 21-yard pickup, double tight ends now for the Falcons. Well, they've moved it all day. Here goes Settle in trouble. Oh, Schultz is there, number 58. We talked about how this young Falcon team has generated excitement in this town. And they had a press conference the other day, a lot of talk about them going to Jacksonville. Owner Rankin Smith said he'll give the city more time. And it's because of players like this that the excitement is here. Chris Miller, the young quarterback, out with a sprain ankle. Gerald Riggs, their all-time leading rusher. Kenny Flowers, a great runner. Got nine starters who have started for this team this year are out with injuries. Gerald Riggs, a three-time Pro Bowler who at the time of this game was the leading rusher and the leading receiver for the for the Falcon football team. So that hurts a lot. We'll be back. Fulton County Stadium. Gerald Riggs takes with him the all-time Atlanta rushing leadership to the bench with injuries. We talked about how battered this Falcon team is. Kevin Slayton alone, Jerry Kramer. 24-13 Seattle leads the Falcons. 10-45 left. Second and 10 the Falcons at the 33 of Seattle. Nice fake. Tipped at the line. Intended for Wisenhunt. That's the second ball that's been tipped against Dills today. He's 5'10", remember. And that was something we kind of anticipated. A little bit of a problem. He's not a, as active as Chris Miller, the young quarterback that's injured, severely sprained ankle. Stays in the pocket more, does not roll out, doesn't get away from that rush quite as well. So we'll have a few more balls tipped. As thirds downs go, this is a big one for the Falcons. This is a threatening drive, and they need to do something with it. Three wide receivers to the top of the screen. Hill's in trouble, gets it to settle, trying to get the first down, and he does with a great effort. That was all John Settle. Gets out of 
the trouble, away from the pressure. Settles again, eludes a couple tacklers, and goes to the first down. Watch the boss come up, try to make the tackle, and bounces off Settles as he goes on downfield for the first down. Big, big first down play for the Atlanta Falcons. Melvin Jenkins is the injured Seattle player. Well, we asked uh, Ralph Hawkins yesterday, the secondary coach for Seattle, if the boss was mean out there, and he said he'll hit you, but he's not as nasty as some of the <laughs> players that played in your era, Jerry. I take exception to that word, nasty. <laughs> I'm not sure you could uh, call Mr. Nitschke or Mr. Butkus nasty. They were intense. They were dedicated. They were committed. They were disciplined. They, they were, were nasty. Incredible <laughs> competitors, and they might have been just a little <laughs> bit nasty. 16 days ago, the Olympic flame lit in Seoul. The games of the 24th Olympiad began. Nearly 10,000 competitors, 160 nations. Came as athletes, they leave as Olympians. Tonight, they gather to celebrate these games and to witness the extinguishing of the Olympic flame, the closing ceremonies only on NBC tonight. There goes Jenkins. West Coast, Washington, and Oregon will get Olympic coverage after the post game. There is Chris Miller. Sprained his left ankle severely last week. In his stead, Bills has hit 13 of 26 for better than 200 yards. Big 45-yard touchdown pass. Another 50 yards to Stacey Bailey. Both of those passes went to Bailey. Maybe none as big as that last one for a first down. He flips it out to Primus. Inside the 15, running hard. Primus now is turned back. Tony Woods, number 57, is the first over there. Bosworth ran him down also. Great pursuit from the Boz going from sideline to sideline. Boz has got great speed. He's got four or five speed, and he will go sideline to sideline and pursue. Really a pretty good physical talent, a pretty good linebacker. But missed some tackles today, but a lot of linebackers and a lot of the secondary people on that Seattle Seahawks team have missed tackles today, including Mr. Woods on that last play. From the 13, second and three. Settle. Makes a nice move at the initial point of contact to get past Bosworth, and then gets inside the five, and Jerry, you just said it, and they missed another tackle, and it was Bosworth again. I tell you, I know Bos is shaking his head. John Settle is just a little stronger than he looks. He's got great leg power, great drive. Watch as Boz comes up and meets him pretty good at the hole. Bing! And expects him to go down. Doesn't wrap his arms around him, and he doesn't go down. And he goes down to the five-yard line. Boz is doing a lot of shoulder tackling, not wrapping up all right. the Over 100 yards rushing for Settle now. First and goal from the five. Just short of the end zone, and it was Bosworth that kept him out of there. Say this for Bosworth, there's no quit in him. There's no quit in him, and there's uh, no lack of effort in him. You'll watch him on the goal line, and he'll hurl his body into that mass. He'll go flying over the top of that line. He's not at all bashful, certainly off the football field, but not at all bashful on the football field either. He's a competitor. Second and goal. Bills tucks it in for the touchdown. Hey, the Boz has seen that with the Sooners. Tack on the conversion. Greg Davis trying to make it a four-point game. Another bad snap. Bills does a great job of getting it down for him. And we have a four-point game. Seattle on top with 8.01 left. We'll take another look. The Falcons like this option play as Dill comes down the line of scrimmage and will duck underneath the linebacker right here, stick his head down, and go for the end zone. 
nice little fake on the corner. Here, look, here comes Boz trying to get outside, and he gets blocked this time. He gets knocked down by the Jamie offensive Dukes. left guard. Jamie Dukes, number 64 in your program. You like that number. 24-20 Seattle. Chuck we got Knox. a ball game. Chuck Knox getting a little nervous. He didn't <laughs> want to have a ball game. He and his coaching staff said yesterday they don't just need a win. They have to win. Well, that situation down there, you would expect a veteran defensive team to stop a young, inexperienced offensive team. Kind of a critical situation. If this is a contender, if this is a, a bona fide playoff team, we should have been able to stop them down inside. And now the crowd is into it. something going on in the middle of the field also. Atlanta has scored on three out of their four possessions in this second half to get back into the game. Officials will talk it over. Looks like there were a couple penalties on the play. Dimry and Jesse Tuggle were mixed up on one side of the field and then over near the where the ball went out of bounds there was another penalty so we'll wait and see. Here's the end of the play where Dimry made the tackle see if he got the face mask. Oh, I've, <laughs> well we oh, have yeah, two I'd say there was a face mask. Still fit to be tied. <laughs> 24 20 here. Well, another crucial mistake on special teams by yet another Falcon rookie. I imagine Bobby Joe Edmonds' head hurts right now, though. He got it twisted completely around. First down from the 35. Got help from everybody. Jesse Tuggle came in to make it look good. Well, now Kelly Stoffer has some pressure on him. He's the rookie quarterback of the Seahawks. Hasn't made that mistake that you might expect out of a rookie yet. You would certainly like to see that running game get four or five yards of crack and not put that pressure on the young guy. Although, in this situation, we have the pressure. Second and ten. for Blades. He underthrew him. Stauffer has performed so well today. Reminds me when he was drafted on draft day in St. Louis, one of the when they announced uh, he, his selection, they said, my God, they've drafted a girl. <laughs> Let you know what the media in St. Louis thought of the Cardinals drafting prowess. He's performed like anything but. He stood tall as a man in the pocket today. Had a good day and has certainly got a critical situation coming up here, Kevin. Six defensive backs on third down. Listen to this crowd. Oh, Largs yeah. it with a big catch. Scott Case was defending. And again, you hear the air go out of the Falcon balloon. Big, Six big, fifty big, left. big play by Kelly Stopper. Stayed in the pocket. Cool. Large and of course. Number 80 closest to us going down the field. He's going to cut across the middle and uh, just good concentration, good hands, and the kind of thing that has made him one of the finest receivers in the history of the game. We're evident right there. 19 yards on that play. Now they can go back to the running game. John L. Williams flags her down. He gets to the 
the 40-yard line of Atlanta. And the Falcons continue to make critical mistakes. You know, it's interesting that Largent uh, really doesn't have that great speed. Never had great speed, but always had good speed. But at this point in his career, he relies on those precision Offside. routes. And knowing the defensive people, defense. Andre Bruce is offside. Another rookie mistake. We talked about the whole day long, but the, the concentration of Largent and the, the pass patterns, the precision routes, and the ability to move the defensive back around and get open time after time after time is a beautiful thing to see. And he never, almost never, drops the ball. Yeah. If you get it to him, chances are he'll hold it. First and five. Keeping it on the ground, first down again inside the 35. Joel Williams makes the tackle. This is where that young Falcon defensive unit has to stand up and be counted. Or where that Seahawk offense has to control the ball. If they can grind the ball out here, move it on down the field and score, they will win the football game. We're getting right to the point now where we either win the game or lose the game right on this drive. The thing that Atlanta could not do in a similar situation against Dallas last week. Exactly. Exactly. Now, this is why you want a running game. You're not going to run the length of the field, but when you want to eat up the clock and preserve a, a victory, now is when you want to run the ball. The rushing numbers for today, 5.15 left in the ballgame. First and 10. John L. Williams. Boy, steady diet of him. Tuggle holding on around the ankles, but not before the battered John L. Williams gets five or six. Coach Knox on the sidelines, encouragement, direction. Critical point in the football game, obviously. Critical point in the season, perhaps, for both of these teams, even though we're only in the fifth week. Seattle did not want to be two and two. Falcons one and three with a couple of tough losses in there. This would be another one in that category if they lose. Second and five. Williams again. Still on his feet. First down. Fumble. Atlanta has the football. Now, will they blow it dead? Yes, I believe they did. First down, Seattle. It looked like the ball was blown dead before the fumble, so it's first down. From the end zone, you watch John L. Williams, the guy we've been talking about all day with the bad rib, down the field, boom, boom, boom. Gets the first down, loses the ball as he goes down, but the whistle had blown or he was down, one of the two. Any, in any case, it's ruled no fumble. Here that the ground caused the fumble, so Seattle retains possession at the 22, first down, 341. Boy, there was over eight minutes left when he took over the ball here. Very impressive. Warner. Another five yards, and he stays in bounds. John Rady, number 59, to make the tackle. Give credit up front for Seattle. Mattis, Bailey, Bush, Millard, and Wilson, along with Mike Tyson, John Spagnola, the tight ends. Really doing the job, Tommy. A.G. in there now at fullback. Number 33, replacing Williams. Coming up on three minutes remaining. Warner now over the 100-yard mark rushing today. So he and Settle, Atlanta's running back, both better than 100 yards today. Second down and five. Warner in trouble, gets away. Close to a first down. Rick Bryan had him, but let him get away. That's exactly what I like to see. Down the field, down the field, run the ball, five yards at a crack, eat up the clock, two minutes and a half, two minutes left to go. As we, Yeah, like the old Packer-style footballs, we watch Kurt Warner make a nice dip outside. The things were clogged up in the middle, and he dips outside, picks up about five yards, and we're going to measure to see if we have a first down or not as we look at Coach Chuck Knox on the sidelines, and now we're looking at Coach Marion Campbell and the Atlanta Falcon staff. Coach Campbell in the black hat there. First down, Seattle. 2.42 remaining. Almost.
almost six minutes they've eaten off the clock with this drive. Yeah. A big play coming on the third and nine play when Stolfer was able to hit Steve Largent. That's the only pass of the drive that was complete. The similarity between this team and the Green Bay team is that all the Atlanta Falcons know what we're going to do right now. It's a matter of stopping it. It's a matter of execution as the Packers used to. Weren't real fancy, but got it done. Especially in the clutch. Warner in trouble this time, and down he goes. Tony Casillas, Rick Bryan were there. Got some help from John Rady. Those Packer teams were awfully effective at not only running out the clock, but driving down the field. Timeout called by Atlanta to 2.33 remaining. If you joined us late, Seattle had a 17-3 lead at the half. The Falcons got back in it with 10 quick points in the third quarter, only to have the Seahawks score again. But then the Falcons got a big touchdown on a one-yard run from Steve Dills here in the fourth quarter to close it to 24-20. That's where we are with this big, important drive of Seattle marching right down the field. Atlanta taking the timeout. Jerry, that's a worn-out defensive unit. They must be questioning themselves now. Marion Campbell is certainly concerned. Yes, they are. They're tired, and the offensive unit is tired, too. You look at Kurt Warner wandering around back there with his hat off, and it's been a long, hot, muggy day, and it's been a pretty difficult day on the football field. It's been a physical day. Run the ball, run the ball, pound, 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 and Kurt Warner has taken quite a bit of pounding, as you say, the Atlanta defensive team has. So we take a breather, uh, take a shot of water, catch our breath, buckle our hat, and let's go. Let's go back and do it. Second down and nine. Blades on a reverse, gets away from two guys. between two defenders standing there waiting for him. I, uh, you've heard the term swivel hip. I don't know what term I would use on this. Can't wait to see this again. I don't know if you'll see Blades. There he comes through here. And watch right here. He squeezes between two defensive players, makes another little move, goes outside, and as Daryl Royal would say in this situation, ooh-wee, can my daddy dance? Look at him dance. That's beautiful. First down. tell you when you look at this at the end it almost appears as though he fumbled it inbounds and the Falcons recovered it you can't tell from that angle if it hit the white chalk but there's Robert Moore and he picked it up inbounds and that's what the Falcons were complaining about and I think they're going to review it I think you're right there's Chuck Haberling the replay official from that first angle it appeared as though it was a recovery Watch it again from the end zone camera. Brian Blades going along the sidelines and loses the ball. He's not out of bounds. He loses the ball here. The ball appears to be out of bounds. Hit the it now hit the, it's out of bounds. Yeah, the ball was out of bounds, I believe. It hit De the uh, the marker. Definitely out on the second kick when it hit Blades' foot and hit the white chalk. The play stands as well. First down. First and goal for the Seahawks as they attempt to close the door on the Falcons. They've eaten up better than six minutes on the clock with this drive, which included only one pass that was complete to Largen on third and nine. Runs into Stauffer. He's close. He got he in. Got in. <laughs> Seattle touchdown, the third touchdown of the day for John L. Williams. Big, strong fullback. Outside, inside, blocks well. Watch that offensive line come off. Not as good a surge as you would like, and John L. has stopped momentarily short of the goal line, but will not be stopped. Continues to make the second, the third effort. Gets in for the score. Last two games, Seattle scored six and seven points. Kelly Stauffer making his first professional start today has racked up 30 with a conversion to come for number 31. Be talking in Seattle about a quarterback controversy. Craig has to stay on the sidelines with that separated shoulder for at least four more weeks. It appears to be Kelly Stoffer's team to run at this point. And if he can 
continues this kind of play, when Craig's ready to come back, Jerry, there may not be anything waiting. It'll be interesting, but it'd be a nice problem to have with David Craig waiting to get in the ball game. We pause briefly for station identification. This is the NBC Television Network. GTV Channel 5 Seattle. Evan Slayton and Jerry Kramer live Fulton County Stadium. Glad you could join us for today's telecast. 31 to 20 Seattle in the lead. Some of the folks start to head for home and an early dinner. 11 point lead for the Seahawks with just 221 remaining. The Atlanta Falcons have played a pretty good football game. They made the mistakes we anticipated. The uh, There's David Craig on the sideline, separated shoulder. Right shoulder, of course, the throwing shoulder. David is out for four to six more weeks. Really won't know how long. It'll be interesting to see what Kelly Stoffer does in that period of time. We but, you, you were talking about those crucial Atlanta mistakes on special teams. They mark just, of a young team. They just killed them today. Yep. But, but there were some exciting moments, some exciting plays by the offense and the defense. And you can see the beginning of a nucleus of young the thing patience patience is needed here in Atlanta Marion Campbell has this team pointed in the right direction there's Lou Barnes he's knocked down fumbles the ball at the 25 let's wait and see and also keep in mind Atlanta's playing without their quarterback Chris Miller and eight other potential starters there is Miller Atlanta has recovered and one of the biggest losses that not many people hear about Mary Campbell said Alex Higdon the tight end they lost him and he's a big play type of guy Bears have defeated Buffalo first loss for the Bills and mm. Eagles continue to run it up against Houston Cleveland adding a field goal at Pittsburgh New England ahead by four over Indianapolis and the Giants held on to beat the Redskins and the Packers <laughs> all right by seven Dills outside to settle. He needs to get out of bounds, and he does at the 30. He has played such a great game today. John settles, and Dills has played a you know pretty pretty decent football game for not being here a month ago. Coming in from Los Angeles, coming off the bench in a, a crucial situation, he's done a, a pretty respectable job. Now those two certainly had nothing to do with a holding penalty on a punting situation, nor did they have anything to do with Lou Barnes fumbling a punt to give Seattle a field goal, and they were not on the field for that length of the field drive by Seattle moments ago. So there's 17 points that could have made the difference for Atlanta. Bryant gets his second sack of the day. First time this year that he has started after missing training camp. He's a very effective inside rusher. for the two-minute warning. Seattle has things well in hand. They lead by 11. We'll come back in a moment. George Hallis led the Bears to 319 victories. In 1987, he was joined in the top five winning his coaches by which active head man? Chuck Knox of the Seahawks, Joe Gibbs of the Redskins, or Chuck Knoll of the Steelers. Who would you choose? Chuck Knoll, you made the right choice. Chuck Knoll became the fifth winningest coach of all time in 1987. Two minutes remain between Seattle and its third victory. Kevin Slayton along with Jerry Kramer. Falcons played him tough all the way. Seahawks came in here averaging just 16 points a game. But they have doubled that almost. Hard to pick an MVP in this game. Young Kelly Stafford had a, an excellent day. You've got to like the way he played. Kurt Warner. Over 100 yards. Oh, well. John L. Williams with three touchdowns playing with a fractured rib. So would be your three leading candidates. Settles had a great game in a losing cause, and he continues to do so, but on third down and long with two minutes left to run the ball is a little strange. 11 points down, folks. Uh, air it out, Steve. Fourth down and seven. He guns it first down yardage. Excellent route run that time by Jesse Hester. Ticking away on Dills and the Falcons. He finds Settle, but underthrows him. Stops the clock with 118 remaining. Dills just doesn't want this game to end. He just <laughs> doesn't want to quit. 
reminder, this telecast presented by authority of the National Football League, and it's intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast for the use of this telecast without the express written consent of the Atlanta Falcons and the National Football League is prohibited. This game is the property of the National Football League. The Atlanta Falcons and Seattle Seahawks, all rights reserved. 31-20, left. Settle. Seahawks more than happy to bring him down in bounds. What a day he's had. What are his numbers? Have we got the numbers on Settles? He's had a tremendous day. Well over 100 yards rushing, and he's caught the ball very well out of the backfield. They need to go deeper. Nice tackle inbounds, loose ball, and I believe Seattle may have it. They do. The Seahawks have it. And with that, they have the ball game. Vernon Dean, number 31, comes up with it after Jesse Hester fumbled it. And it ends on a, on a fitting note for the young Atlanta offense. A fumble as we watch from the end zone. Steve Dills goes back. Plenty of time. Pumps the ball two or three times. It's Hester on the sidelines. Fumble. Seahawks recover. Vernon Dean very gratefully sitting there found a Christmas gift at his feet. And the Seahawks will just ice the final 50 seconds and take their third victory of the year in a must-win situation for them on a long flight back to Seattle. The Falcons another very disappointing loss. Stauffer touches his knee down. Nobody's touched him though. Big day for the Seattle Seahawks. Big day for the young quarterback. And playing time, some maturity. A game that the team had to win. And everybody performed pretty well. Time for the Most Valuable Player Award. Sponsored by Budweiser. And today's MVP is chosen by Jerry and I. Is John L. From the Seattle Seahawks. Budweiser will make a contribution to the United Way on behalf of all the MVPs selected in today's games. This one is in the books. Williams scored three touchdowns this afternoon, playing with a fractured rib, leading the Seahawks, as well as Kelly Stauffer, to a 31 20 victory over the Atlanta Falcons. There are Miller and Stauffer drafted in the same round together. First round picks two years ago. We'll return to wrap it up here in Atlanta in a moment. And Jerry Kramer. The Seahawks move to three and two while the Falcons fall to one and four. Another bitter loss for the Falcons, 31-20. Seattle advances with rookie quarterback Kelly Stoffer making a very successful debut. Fullback John L. Williams scoring three touchdowns on the ground. And an impressive way to win for the Seahawks this afternoon. An impressive way to win in a game that they had to win. A must-win situation. We mentioned Stoffer, the young quarterback. Very good day. No interceptions. That was a key. Kurt Warner, better than 100 yards. Steve Largent kept his string alive. Now counting at 157 consecutive games with a catch. Steve Dills, on the other hand, threw two interceptions, but accredited himself very well. Settle rushed for over 100 yards, so they did some good things. 